Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, you can see I'm sitting in my car. I had a very, very late afternoon lunch with my mother-in-law at our favorite little Mexican restaurant. And I came down here to Sam's to buy some blackberries. My friend Phil in Evansville, Indiana, was telling me he's been eating those for many, many years. And he has got absolutely perfect vision. He's a pilot. And so I've started eating uh, those blackberries organic every morning a handful of those so I came in to get me some uh, so let's get started I told you yesterday and uh, and actually let me stop here yesterday I recorded a second time our Bible teaching snippet and after I got it loaded oh maybe 20 minutes or so later the Lord started working on my heart and was just like you need to post that first teaching that you recorded and I did not post it because I felt like I got really really harsh and I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm very passionate, okay? I'm passionate. But I wasn't trying to attack or uh, be mean to anybody. My heart grieves for the people of God who are put under wrong teachings and they're put in bondage and they're hurt and they feel like they're outcast and not welcome in the assembly of God. And I'm not talking about your local church. I'm talking about in the family of God. Oh, woe to us, us teachers uh, of the law, teachers and leaders of God's people. Woe to us that we would not be hypocrites, that we would not abuse his beloved ones. Uh, that He does have a greater judgment, a greater standard that we live by. And I pray that I will, uh, when I see my Lord and he says, well done, Faye, well done. Not, well, why'd you do that? Okay, uh, so today, let me get started. I want to tell you a little more. I told you yesterday, and I think I missaid it. I said I wanted to show you biblical tithing. There is no such thing as a biblical tithe. Jesus set aside the Mosaic Old Covenant laws, all 613 of those. He fulfilled them and set them aside. So uh, going by the tithe, is set aside we are under a new agreement that jesus instituted the only time the word tithe is ever even used in any of the new testament is in the book of hebrews when paul is comparing the old covenant to the new covenant and that jesus is supreme to the old moses law and the uh, old covenant that Jesus and the new covenant is superior and it has been replaced, okay, and set aside. So now, look, here's the first thing we got to do. When teachers and preachers of the law are teaching the Old Testament tithe that you're cursed or that God's mad at you and all of these things, and that's one way you barter with God. We're bartering with God so he'll bless us? Really? That's the, that's the reason that you really want to give is so that God will bless you or that he will barter with you and give you an increase. See, that's not even the right heart toward giving. But here's what I want to say. Did you know anybody that teaches the tithe is either repeating it from hand me down doctrines or here's even worse, is that they have not gotten a new heart. We cannot walk in God's grace and love people the way that we're supposed to until we're born again. We have to be given a new heart and a new spirit because God cannot write his laws of love on an ungenerated heart. That's why he said he would give us a new pure heart and he'll write his laws on us. And uh, all of the laws hang on loving God and loving people. That's it. Jesus said that. So, I want to start here real quick and read to you what my friend Leo posted today. And I do not know what version of the Bible he posted, but this covered a lot of what I've been talking about. And uh, Paul is talking to Timothy about he wants him to stay along in Ephesus and try to resolve uh, and correct some teachers who are teaching false doctrines, okay? So here we go. Just as I urged you to stay on in Ephesus while I was proceeding on to Macedonia, do so in order that you might command and correct certain ones not to be teaching different doctrines, nor paying attention to myths and endless genealogies which cause speculations rather than stewardship of God which is by faith. That right there 
uh, different doctrines would be tithing instead of giving, and paying attention to myths would be talking about the Old Testament tithe that was put in place by Abraham. There is no absolutely zero basis for that. Abr Abram tithed someone else's goods to the king of peace because he was traveling through his territory and that was Babylonian law to do that and after that he gave all that stuff back to the kings what was left over and get this Abram never tithed a thing that he owned for 430 years after that there was no tithe recorded Abram didn't do it anymore and neither did anybody else until it was put into the old covenant law by Moses, okay? So, see, that's an old myth and endless genealogies. Bam, that's it right there, Leo. And uh, which, and it doesn't make people want to be stewards of God, which is by faith. And the goal of your command is love from a pure heart and good conscience and sincere faith, okay? Having departed from such things, some turned aside to worthless talk wanting to be law teachers teachers of the word not understanding either the things which they are saying or about what things they are speaking so confidently boy if this does not cover it wow this is exactly what the false teachers of the tithe are doing they're teaching different doctrines than Paul and Jesus and all the New Testament writers. They're telling people to pay attention to old myths about Abraham and tithing and about how the crops are now money, not food, and all of these things, okay? And in, it's just, this works perfectly. Thank you for that today, Leo. So yesterday, I told you I wanted to show you what biblical giving should look like. So here we go. I'm going to get real strategic now, and I want to go over to 1 Timothy chapter 5. I'm sorry, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own relatives, and especially family members, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever, one who does not believe in God. So number one, we are supposed to take care of our loved ones, not just people in our household under that one roof. If you have a family member struggling, like your mother or your father, I talked about that yesterday, where Jesus was calling out the leaders who were teaching individuals to bring the money into the temple and give it to them because he would get a better blessing off of giving it to the house of God rather than spending it on his elderly mother or father which he was required by Moses law to take care of his family and he was breaking the commandments of God to keep the traditions and false doctrines false teachings of the leaders of the temple that's what this is all about and right here Timothy redirects us on what it looks like first you take care of your family you do not ever give money away to anybody that is going to make a loved one suffer and go hungry that's number one now the next one I want to talk to you about is James chapter 1 verse 27 this should be the golden rule right here true spirituality true worship true religion pure undefiled that is in the eyes of our father is to make a difference to help take care of the lives of the orphans and the widows in their troubles and to refuse to be corrupted by the world's values that right there i could preach an hour on that guys we're not, any church you walk into you need to ask them show me your financial statement and let me see if i want to be yoked with you and what you're doing if they're not giving money number one huge sums of money to the poor to the widows if are they helping the poor people and widows in their own church are they taking care of the people that are sitting in that congregation and second of all are they spending money and investing money into the community to make a profound difference or are we just in a little church system that we've got enough money coming in to have a nice building and nice furniture and vans and expense accounts and everybody is in this happy little group that I call it the Sunday Country Club that is not what Jesus and uh, the apostles 
the New Testament writers called us into. Oh, no, 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 no. We are supposed to be making an impact on our communities with our time and our money. Time and our money, okay? So right here, that's number one. Number one, take care of your own family. And then after that, the next priority is taking care of people who are needy. Right now, today, those uh, this would include homeless people as well. So the next thing I want to tell you is how you measure what you are supposed to be giving. I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. For if the intention and desire are there, the size of the gift does not matter. Your gift is fully acceptable to God according to what you have, not what you don't have. Did you know that someone who lives on a Social Security income and can barely pay their bills shouldn't be giving to a church, but instead, if they want to help volunteer in the community, did you know in the eyes of God that is a more pure gift than for me to write a $100 check because it's extra in my bank account? No, God sees that person giving more because they're giving their time and they're giving what they have, not what they don't have, okay? So let me keep going. I want to give you another scripture. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Each of you, that means everybody, by the way, each of you should give as you have decided in your own heart to give. You should not be sad when you give or to give reluctantly. You should not give because you feel forced to give out of compulsion. God loves a person who gives happily and cheerfully. Okay, so what did that just say, guys? Okay, so when somebody is preaching and teaching the tithe, telling you that the way you get blessed by God or the way you avoid being cursed by God, okay, or that if you sow into their ministry, God can give you a reaping off of that. That's an exchange program. Uh, that that's how you're supposed to give. That is the wrong heart in giving. The right heart in giving is because it's from a heart of love. Remember, I read it to you at the very beginning of what Leo sent me. I'm going to read it one more time. The goal of your command or your correction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. Now look, there's nothing wrong with sowing and reaping, okay? Uh, I have never, ever sowed money into the kingdom of God thinking that God was going to give me money back, okay? I bought a sound system for a church once, and it was about $10,000. Did you know I didn't expect God to give me $30,000, $50,000, or $100,000 back? No, I saw a need in a church, and I met the need, and I did it from my heart of love toward the congregation. In fact, I didn't even want anybody to know who paid for that, okay? It wasn't about me being Little Miss Prissy. It was about they were struggling. A lot of the people could not hear what was being said, and I wanted everybody to be able to get more out of what was being taught and preached at that church and that they could hear better through a sound system, okay? Let me just wrap this up and tell you that, you know, guys, uh, I always hear from people in the pulpit and in leadership is that the reason that they have to teach the tithe is because they can't uh, uh, trust God's people to give money for the bills at the church. Did you know it doesn't matter what our reason for teaching lies and ma manipulating people, no matter what the need may be, it is still morally wrong. It is absolutely morally wrong, and God cannot bless that because it is not in his character, his likeness, and his image. Listen, I'm going to hop off here today. I want each of you to know that I love you, and it's never, ever my intent to cause strife or contention, but it is my intent for people to know the truth and for them to be set free not just people in the church, but pastors and leaders as well. I love you, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.